Curtis Calhoun here with MMA News, and right now I'm joined by UFC bantamweight Adrian Yanez, who's set to face Tony Kelly at UFC Austin on June 18th. Adrian, how's it going, man? Man, I'm doing good. Loving living life, man. Uh, man, it's just been so excited. I'm, I'm just happy I got a fight, man. And, and the best part about it, it's in Texas, so I'm super excited. I love it. And uh, first things first, uh, just kind of catching me up on uh, camp so far. What's the energy been like in the gym, and uh, how pumped are you for your return? Man, I, I'm actually like really, really pumped just because like I, I've been I've been wanting a fight since February. Mm-hmm. So like the fact that I actually got a fight was uh, is just motivation enough for me because I've been like I've been training and uh, for the past like since February, I've been training just getting in shape just so I won't have to have a fat camp or anything like that. So uh, the training has just been uh, great, you know, and then being able to be a part of like uh, camps for my training partners and all that stuff. And then also seeing R- Rafian Stotts, like a uh, Bellator champ, you know, go through his, go through his and like seeing him and like uh, seeing him get that belt. Like it's the energy has been like really high. So like for me, I've just been like super excited just watching everybody else do their thing. Now I get, and now it's time for me to do my thing. Like it's, it's been phenomenal just to have like great training partners in my, in my camp. This has been nice, man. And then adding like uh, people like, uh, like Michael Chase Corley, the Mo- mm. my Muay Thai coach, and then also to Eve Edwards, you know, adding them to my camp being like has been has been amazing. That's awesome. And uh, what it's been like uh, training with Rufion Stotts? Obviously, uh, you just mentioned he uh, got the belt in Bellator, uh, the interim belt. But uh, what's kind of that whole experience been like? Man, it's been it's been great, man. It's been great. I've been I've been a part of two champ camps, and that to me has been like amazing just to be a part of two of them my god some people don't even get the chance to be a part of one so uh to me it's just been amazing so like just seeing the hard work and just seeing how hard he's been working because like legitimately after winning the belt he's already back in training he was back in training that next wednesday like he was already trying to train already trying to get back get better and everything so like man like it's it's a big inspiration just seeing him like just seeing him just actually just like put in the work like because he didn't have a fight for a very long time after that uh after his last fight i think he after he fought uh magomed magomedov he didn't have a fight for a long time but he just stayed consistent like he was one of my one of my main training partners whenever uh i was in camp for davy grant and he's just stayed consistently at the gym helping out training part like my training partner cameron smotherman just like it's just been it's just been cool because like just seeing the dedication out of camp, not even in a camp, out of camp, just seeing the dedication, like, man, that, that, that brings another sense of like, yeah, like this is what it takes. And I was like, all right. So seeing it and I'm like, all right, cool. <laughs> That's awesome, man. And uh, when you look at Tony Kelly's uh, skill set, what are your thoughts on the matchup? Obviously he's a guy um, that likes to come forward. Do you feel like this is a perfect matchup and uh, with your style on the feet? Oh yeah, absolutely. I feel like this is a perfect style matchup because I, I look for counters. I'm looking for openings every single moment. And if you're going to be the guy that comes in forward, you're going to leave a lot of openings. And I feel like this, it's only going to play into my favor. Uh, his style is very, very good. He's uh, he's, he comes forward. He's a brawler. He likes to mix it up. He likes to, uh, he's not very, uh, how can I say he's not shy away, from, shy away from just throwing punches. He likes right. to throw punches, kicks, knees, everything. So he's a really dangerous opponent. So I got to be on my P's and Q's. Uh, but Honestly, uh, I do see some things that I like in this matchup uh, for me. Uh, so I'm like, every time I look at it, I'm just like, all right, I see, I see what I like. I see, I see a lot of things that I like. So to me, I'm, I'm super excited for this fight because I know he's going to bring it. And then mm. for me, I don't like to take steps back, man. I like, I like getting into the fight and I love, like, I love being able to perform underneath that pressure. And to me, like, I really can't wait to get into that, into that octagon because I really believe I'm going to shut his lights out. That's awesome, man. And uh, I'm sure you've been asked like a dozen times about Tony Kelly and his uh, comments about Brazil, but kind of want to talk about uh, what's next for you and looking ahead um, in terms of his comments and, and the feedback that you've received, do you feel any extra pressure with all the new fans from Brazil and all that, that you've gotten on social media, or are you just laser focused on what you have to do? Honestly, uh, it, it plays into my favor of like getting more fans and everything. 
Uh, but the game plan has never changed. Like nothing has never changed. Like uh, I still want to go in there. I still want to knock him out. I still want to go out there. Like everything is just the same. It's just that I got more people that want to want to see me do it. So I think that's I think that's super cool. Uh, I think that's super super cool. Uh, it sucks the way it happened. It sucks the way that it happened like that. But at the same time, like man, if I if I make other fans a lot more happy for that even happening, then a hundred percent. Like come on board, come one, come all. I'm I'm here for it. Uh, you know, so to me, uh, it doesn't change anything, you know, cause I, I love fighting under pressure. I love the pressure. It, 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 it's, 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 it, to me, it's fantastic. It br- make, it brings something else out of you. So like, to me, I'm, it just brings me more excitement. I'm like, all right, cool. Like performing under pressure, like the, the little pressure, like, yeah, yeah. Like that, that to me is like super cool, but uh, honestly, again, like it doesn't bring any added pressure that I already don't put on myself. I already put so much pressure on myself that like, it, it's kind of just like everything else, like everybody else, fans and like fans, friends, family, everything else is on the back of my mind. Cause I put the most pressure on myself. So it doesn't really, it doesn't really matter to me, but in the sense of like the whole, uh, the comments that you made pretty, pretty shitty, pretty, yeah. pretty, pretty shitty, you know, uh, stupid, you know, his downfall ended up being like something that that's, that a lot of people were just looking at, like they want me to knock him out. So I think, you know, it plays into my favor of me wanting to knock him out. Anyways, everybody just wants me to put, put him to sleep. So, you know, I'm going to satisfy the fans and also being myself, like I'm going to satisfy myself with a knockout victory and hopefully another 50 K. Awesome, man. And uh, you don't get to travel too far for this one, obviously uh, just going from Houston to Austin. Um, how much of a relief is it to not uh, focus too much on the traveling aspect of fight week and all that, and uh, kind of just focus on the preparation. Man, honestly, uh, I I have like the traveling to me, it doesn't really throw me off or anything because I've already I'm already so used to it, like traveling to Vegas and everything. So I just been blessed has been in Vegas, Vegas and Texas. So like this, it to me has been amazing. Uh, The traveling again, I'm not flying into Austin. I'm gonna go ahead and drive there since it's like it's only like a couple hours. Uh, me driving to Austin and me flying to uh, Vegas is almost about the same time, uh, depending depending on who's driving. If my brother's driving, then we'll get there in like an hour and a half. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but uh, no, uh, to me, uh, it doesn't make no never mind to me because it's it's I just fighting in Texas too is is it's like it's pretty wild for me. Like in the biggest stage of my career, like this this is pretty wild. Like because I I never would have thought I'd be here, and the fact that like the place that started it all, like started this UFC run for me, is right down the road in Belton, Texas, like, to me is, like, like, I'm super excited, like, I'm, fuck, like, man, like, Belton started it off for me, uh, started it off, because after that, I got my contender shot, and then after that, got my UC debut, and then, uh, kind of, kind of on the road, you know, so, like, uh, kind of got me on the run, got me on the run I am on today, so to me, like, it's, just another like almost like a homecoming for me. Uh, I wish it was Houston, but I'm gonna make my homecoming to Houston very soon. So man, I'm I'm hoping I'm hoping for it. I'm waiting for it, and I can't wait till it happens. Awesome, man. And uh, yeah, I was about to mention last time you fought in Texas, I believe, was in LFA against Kyle Estrada, right? Oh yes, sir. Yes, sir. That yeah. that was a, that was a fight. I love that fight. I love going back and watching it. Do you feel like that was kind of almost a, a turning point for you in your career? Cause your next fight you got in the contender series and then obviously four fights now into the UFC. Yeah. Uh, actually I would actually say my turning point in my career was actually, uh, was actually the miles Johns fight. Like for me, for myself was the miles Johns fight because I looked at that fight. I remember being in the back and just being just like, I know I could have done more and I'm not tired. I'm not exhausted. I should be throwing up right now. If I, if I really gave it my all, uh, I should have been like exhausted. I should have been like, I, I shouldn't like that. I should have been carried out on a stretcher. You know, that's, the, that's the type of mentality I have. And I remember like looking at that and just being like, just being in the back, just being so disappointed. It's like, yeah, I, cause at the, at, at that time, like I was doing it for everybody else, but not myself. And then I was like, once I actually sat back and looked at, it, I was like, fuck like it, I, I was like man this is it's not me like what the fuck am I doing and then like turning that around and like being like nah like no that that's that's that wasn't me you know I was in the biggest the at that point the biggest stage of my career and I fucking failed 
again and i was like man no i can't have this anymore so i can't let my i can't let myself down i don't care about letting about letting anybody else down i can't let myself down because if i let myself down you know it's a bigger pain on me and like i'm never i'm never gonna let that happen again uh so after that fight uh i went on to get uh two more finishes and then that kyle estrada fight uh it was a good pace it was a good push you know especially with a guy like kyle estrada who at that time was just on a roll uh so to me, I was like, nah, this, this is the fight. This is that fight that I'm going to go ahead go. I'm going to have to go out there and fight this guy, not give him a, not give him no breaks whatsoever. So to me, whenever we fought, like I did have to go through that little bit of extra adversity because that, that guy can kick, <laughs> yeah. that guy can kick. So, uh, to me, like, it was just like, nah, I can't let this happen. And as soon as that, like my legs started hurting, like I started getting that pain in my, my, my shin and my calf, you know, cause he throws really good calf kicks. I was like, nah, I'm gonna kick him with this bitch. Like, ah, nah, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm gonna kick him with the same leg. He's hurting. I don't even care. Like I'm, just, I'm like, I want him to know that like, this doesn't bother me. And luckily enough, I ended up changing the, uh, the tone of the fight ended up going up my, ended up going my way, which man, to me, I felt like I won all three rounds, but at the same time, uh, yeah, no, that that fight just kind of helped push me into the uh, in, into it. The Miles Johns turned it around for me, like my mentality towards everything. And then that college shot fight kind of helped push me into that, help like give me that extra gear. And then when I got into the contender series, like uh, knocking them out, knocking them out that quick and just seeing, I was like, oh, yeah, no, I, I absolutely deserve this position that I am in today. Hmm. Absolutely, man. And uh, it's been a while since you've uh, gotten the chance to fun, uh, fight in front of a full crowd. You've been fighting at the apex for your last four. Um, just kind of talk about how pumped you are to uh, fight in front of the fans. Man, I'm super excited. Like, I really am excited because, man, I, 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 cornered, I cornered somebody for Houston for this Houston past Houston event in February. Uh, and I just remember just going, walking out through that tunnel. I just remember just like, feeling the energy and just like see, like feeling the energy as the walkout and i was i started getting that like oh fuck like i was i was starting to get that like little feeling of like man i want to go out there i want to be out there already and like i felt like i was walking out to a fight and i was like man this is i love this feeling this is the feeling that i want this this is the feeling the true feeling of a ufc fight like and i was just like man i can't i can't wait because it I, I need that. Like, I absolutely need that fight in front of Houston is one of like one of my biggest dreams. And uh, now that I'm gonna get it in front of Austin, man, it's just like, it's I'm knocking on the door to get that Houston card. So like right now I'm like, I'm super excited. Like I, I need it. Like I need it. I feel like my fight, my fighting style is fan friendly. And I yeah. feel like, like just with that extra boost in the crowd, like I think it would make it uh, uh, 10 times better. You know, uh, the, the apex starting to grab a little bit of a crowd, you know, but it's not the crowd that I want. I want that like full stadium. I want, I want like whenever I knock somebody out just to, just for everything to be inaudible, man. I just want to be able to just to hear like, like cheering. That's what I want. Like, you know, that I want that. Are you entertained moment? That's exactly what I want. Awesome, man. And uh, another up and coming bantamweight, uh, Sean O'Malley. He uh, previously communicated uh, interest in a fight with you in the future. Um, was there any talks of a fight happening before this uh, Tony Kelly matchup came to fruition? And do you see that fight happening in the near future? Oh, that fight's definitely going to happen in the future. I, I'm not shying away from it. And I know he hasn't shied away from it. Like, uh, absolutely. We both, we both want the fight, but uh, you know, just going back to, you know, I think the UC has, di has different plans for him and has different plans for me. Uh, Cause I I've been telling my managers like bro he keeps calling my name like yeah let's let's go like I like you're, I I don't I'm not I'm not gonna be that guy that you're just gonna call my name and like go after it you know another reason why I took this Tony Kelly fight because if I'm being 100 percent honest this Tony this Tony Kelly fight really doesn't do much for me in like positioning and anything like I was really looking for like somebody else like uh, I think at the time he wasn't fighting anybody is uh, Nate Manus you know because he's mm -hmm. under like he's 15 and one, I think that would have been a great, like he's up there, right. He we're like neck and neck right now. So I wanted that fight to help push me forward, you know, and uh, not saying anything bad about Tony Kelly, but uh, he's kind of like a little back on the ladder on the ladder end of things. And I'm trying to move smoothly, move my way into the top 15. So like, it, it doesn't do much to me, but since I ha haven't had a fight and I've been wanting a fight and like everything else, like the biggest part about it is that he had called me out. 
And I was like, all right, nobody else wants to, nobody like Nate Manis isn't going to fight. Uh, already has a fight book. Well, let's get Tony Kelly. And we got Tony Kelly. And I was like, all right, cool. You know, uh, anybody who says my name, you know, I got to step up to him. You know, I got to go out there and shut him down. So, uh, yeah, Sean O'Malley, absolutely. He's been calling my name for a very long time. Like there was like so many interviews with, within the first five minutes, he was mentioning my name. So I was like, yeah, yeah no, a hundred percent. I got to go out there. And, like, I got to go out there and stop this guy. I got to go out there and knock him out, man. That's like in my head. That's how I'm envisioning. That's how I envisioned that fight going, you know, and I'm training for it. And, you know, I just can't wait for that fight to happen. Cause I know as soon as I do it, my stock rises. Yeah. And he's talked a lot about um, kind of a slow and steady progression uh, towards that bantamweight title picture and taking his time, not rushing into uh, um, a higher level of competition. What do you make that? Do you feel like it's a smart idea in terms of how he's handled his uh, strength of schedule and all that? Yeah, I, I feel like there, it, it's a catch 22 for me. Cause like there's the business side for me. And then there's also the fighter side for me. Like I'm always thinking of uh, like, I always had to like get myself out of the fighter set mode whenever it starts coming to like a, a lot of, cause like anybody, like everybody on Twitter be like, Hey, you should be fighting this guy. We're like, yeah, fuck yeah. I should fight that guy. Next, you know, like the business side of me is like, well, like I'm not getting paid to fight that guy. So it's like not getting paid as much to fight someone like that. I was like, Oh, let me turn it back. But that's also the reason why I have managers too. So it's like, Hey, like, uh, probably another reason why like the UFC wasn't, wasn't ready for that. Uh, for the Sean O'Malley fight or anything like that because I think Sean O'Malley's trying to get paid a lot more so that's why he's taking a, a fight with someone like Pedro Munoz instead of someone like me which I completely understand it's, it's it is it is one of like a matchup you know Pedro, Pedro Munoz is kind of on a skid but at the same time it's still like not the it's it's not the skid like it's not on a skid like uh, Eddie Wineland or Thomas Almeida like he's right. fighting a guy who's only lost to like the good top guys, guys, like yeah. top guys, like Jose Aldo, who's still out there going out, going out there and beating everybody, you know? So, uh, you know, it's a good, it's a really, really good step up. And also if Sean O'Malley's trying to renegotiate, that's actually the perfect fight for him to take. Cause he goes out there, beats that guy. I don't know if Pedro Munoz is getting paid more than him, but if he is, it helps out with negotiating. So it's like, it makes it so much more easier for him. So like, I understand, like there's no bragging rights if uh, for Sean O'Malley to get paid more, if he beats me. So it's like, Hey, Pedro Munoz fight you fight Pedro Munoz, you get paid more, you know, because especially because I think he's still, he's still up in, up there in the ranks, you know, especially because again, his losses are only to the top, top of the top guys. Yeah, definitely. And uh, last question for me, once again, I really do appreciate the time. Uh, what can fans expect from you at uh, UFC Austin? Oh man. Uh, again, like I'm a Houston, like Derek Lewis says it the best Houston, Houston throws, man, we swing and bang. That's exactly what I'm going to go do. And I'm going to go out there and, uh, I'm gonna go out there and knock him out, man. He he was uh Tony Kelly went out there and said he's he's a Louis, Louisiana guy from the swamps. And I'm like, well, I'm from Houston where we swing and bang. And exactly what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go out there, I'm gonna swing and I'm gonna bang. And I'm telling you right now, I'm getting that knockout. I'm getting that knockout. It, it's, I'm not gonna search for it, but I just know with my style and w- what he brings, I'm gonna get him knock. I'm gonna get I'm gonna get a knockout. Another 50k for me. I love it, man. Well, uh, before we go, I'll give you the final word to uh, shout out any sponsors you have. Shout out your team, oh, all that good stuff. Oh, I'll uh, give it the final word. And first off, thank you for the platform. Thank you for having me on. This is amazing. Thank you so much. A uh, big shout out to my uh, management company, Iridium Sports Agency. You know, they they've helped me along through this process. And I I, I greatly appreciate it. Like Jacob, uh, Jason, Jason House, Jacob Parga, uh, Jeremy, Jeremy, Lance, all those guys. Uh, Ed Cap, yeah, my guy. Uh, also, a big shout out to my sponsors, uh, uh, Dukes Up. Get get your oh shit, uh, get yourself a soap. Get yourself that heavy hitter soap, man. Go ahead and get it. Man, I got a lot of th- a lot of things in the works right now. I actually have a shirt coming out here pretty soon for my fight. So you know, get it, cop it in Houston, in in Austin, Texas. Man, I almost slipped up and said Houston, but yeah, no, you're, super you're, excited. I'm super super excited. I don't know, like you can probably see it from me right now. I'm just ready to go. <laughs> Absolutely, man. Well, Adrian, thanks again for the time. It was great to meet you. Great to chat with you. And uh, I'm sure we'll chat again soon. Thank you so much, man. Man, Absolutely. Thank you.